You guys notice anything different about me? I got a new light. It was really expensive, but it makes me look way better on my camera. That was also way too expensive. Hi, yeah, I'm calling because I need to defer my credit card payments. Perhaps I was a bit harsh on some of our newer brethren and sisters, all three of you. I had some angry comments, some incensed individuals foaming at the mouth that I dare insult those of us without fire capes. And if I have hurt your feelings from the bottom of my heart, I ab <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm not sorry, fuck you. You suck, but, but, I was also bad at one point. I was terrible. I was a poop-flinging homo erectus back when I started this game. And if you want to be able to grow into the elitist, toxic player that the majority of 416 now thinks that I am, then you need to start somewhere. You can get good, guys. I know I tease, but I do it because I know that you can learn and grow. All you need is the opportunity. And guess what? I'm here to give that to you. Papa Tasty can help. Let's start with getting your first fire cape. Here we are in game, boys, and there's a couple things that we need to go over before we climb up into those Little Caesars hot and ready $5 fight caves. First things first, what are the minimum stats that I need? Well, this is the second best melee cape in the game, so it stands to reason that the entire thing is done with range. Wait, what? So your most important stats, therefore, are going to be range, hit points, defense, and prayer. Now, for hit points, 75 is a pretty decent number. For range, you're going to want 75 again for that blowpipe, and you can do this with a rune crossbow if it's, like, too expensive, but let's be real, if you're watching this video for legitimate advice and not to just watch me flame new players or those that I deem lesser, you're, you're going to need a blowpipe. Defense, going to recommend 70 for Barrow's tank gear if you want to have some room for mistakes. And prayer, 43 is a hard requirement. 44 is nice for Eagle Eye, but anything past that is just a bonus. Second on the list here is going to be your gear setup. So for the absolute minimum gear setup, you're going to need this here. Okay, that joke. You're, you're going to want this here. The total cost is going to be about 7 mil, including supplies, but that's mostly because of the blowpipe and the fury. If you have a little bit of extra money, you can, of course, bring an archer's ring. Just make sure that you imbue it and work your way towards this max gear setup here, depending on your financial situation. Now, you can also get Jad as a slayer task if you unlock his R's. If this is an option for you or you happen to have a slayer task, I do recommend it. It's quite nice, so bring that imbued slayer helm. But, of course, it is not necessary. So, earlier, I did mention some tanking gear most people take a Verox helm for their first fight cave I'd recommend that if you air closer to the 70 defense mark and if you really find yourself struggling bring a Verax skirt as well final note on the checklist here is inventory setups we can get a little bit funky here there are some sneaky things that you can do for Jad number one you can choose to bring chinchampas this is for when the healers are coming out but we're gonna get into that you're only gonna need a few of them number two if you're a bit of a baller you can bring some purple sweets not only are these an essentially infinite stackable food source but they also give stamina which could be nice, though they are very expensive. Third, and I actually recommend this one pretty hard, bring a dart switch for Jad. Bring dragon. I don't care if you're poor, just stop being poor and bring 100 dragon darts. You're not gonna need that many, but better safe than sorry. For the potions, I would say two bastion potions is a good starting point. You can bring three if you're a little more comfortable. I also recommend bringing a stamina for some of the later waves because it can help to be able to run around. But if you brought purple sweets, you can skip this. Eight ceridomen brews is a pretty safe amount and I would fill the rest with super restores. Not prayer potions, now is not the time to penny pinch, but super restores. Now that we've got all that covered, let's hop in. So the way the fight caves work is actually pretty neat. There are 63 waves of enemies, each one harder than the last, and there are six or technically eight different monsters you're going to encounter, ranging from the lowest level bird thing to Papa Jad himself. Each wave adds a new monster starting from the lowest level, and when there are two of the same monster alive, they essentially perform like this fusion ho thing and turn into the next tier monster in the next wave. You don't need to memorize this pattern. In fact, I actually recommend pulling up like a sheet with the waves and their spawns to reference while you're in the caves. Uh, but with that covered, let's take a look 
at each monster individually. First on the list here is this little idiot bird. Uh, it pecks you and drains your prayer with every hit. They don't do a lot of damage, so you don't need to pay too much attention to these, but if you're safe, I would say prioritize them so you don't lose too much prayer. It can get annoying. Next up is the fat, stupid blob. These roll up and whack you a little bit, and once again, don't do too much damage, and, and when they die, they split into two tinier, but equally fat and stupid blobs. So no special mechanics there. They're actually pretty low priority for you. Now, the fun stuff. This here is the Rudy Tooty Point and Shooty, also known as the Ranger. This one, no pun intended, can be a bit of a thorn in your side. On the earlier waves, you just pre-range against these, but when the majors are out, they will actually be your highest priority because you will not be praying against them. And they are decently accurate, so you're going to be taking some damage from these guys, just be warned. Next up, Chad Thunder This guy is an absolute unit and will almost certainly take your girl if you leave her unattended. He's also called the Malier, but this bad boy is going to be safe spotted for most of the caves. Be warned, he does pack a punch and he will heal himself and nearby mobs if you're in his melee range, but he, he's honestly pretty easy to do. Deal with so until you get to the waves with all three of the major mobs out uh, you know it's it's pretty smooth sailing but we'll get to that our next and penultimate monster is this autistic frog also known as the major he is a big boy and when he comes out you are going to keep prey mage over your head until jad spawns and is running towards you ready to shove your poop back from whence it came other than that no special mechanics, he's actually pretty easy. Now finally, we have Jad, but don't worry your pretty little face about Jad just yet. We're gonna get to him, don't worry, we just gotta go through the waves first. So, like I said earlier, there are 63 waves, and I'm not going to go through all of them individually because, number one, they have random spawn locations, and number two, YouTube doesn't pay me yet, so I'm not making this video really any longer than I have to be, freak you guys. What you do need to know are the general concepts to apply to these waves. First one, Italy Rock. This lusty igneous formation looks a tad bit like a boot, thus the name is born. This is your home now. It is very easy to save spot monsters on this rock, and that's exactly how you're going to deal with the Maleers as much as possible. Hug the north side of it if the enemies are west of you, hug the west side if enemies are south of you, and hug the south side if the enemies are north of you. It'll take a little bit of uh, learning to figure that one out, but you'll get it pretty quick. Now, you can start each wave in this inside corner here for maximum safety because this will automatically safe spot a good few of the monsters. I'm not going to get too deep into the mechanics here, but this works because enemies track you based on their southwest tile, so try Try highlighting them with the NPC indicators, and you'll see what I mean. Second, understanding priority. Follow this acronym here, DPS. Your kill priority is whatever is damaging you first, whatever you are praying against second, and lastly, anything you have safe spotted. Now, of course, you can kill the safe spotted one first if you have to, like, unsafe spot it to get to the one you're praying against, but just apply some logic to the situation I believe in you guys, and otherwise, it's a pretty good rule of thumb. Now, the fight caves is one of those things that you really just have to get in there and do to learn, but, you know, I expect you guys to make it to Jad without too many problems, really, so let's, let's go ahead and tackle the thick boy himself. No doubt your hands are shaking. They're probably sweaty, too. I remember the feeling. Neat little trick is wherever the bright colored major spawns, that is, of course, where Jad will spawn. So you can say spot one of the majors on this last wave and switch out your darts, heal up and get ready and then kill the last major and spawn the big boy Jad himself. Approach his spawn point and start with prey range up. Now, Jad, as you know, has two different attacks, range and mage. His range attack is the quick stomp and his mage attack is when he raises up on his hind legs. I recommend playing with game sounds for this as it will help you with the mage attack, but if you listen for the range attack and then pray, it will be too late. So focus on the visuals for now. All you have to do is stand there and react until the healers come out at half health. This sounds newbie, but some common advice is to say the attacks out loud, and yes, you do sound stupid, but would you rather sound stupid with a fire cape on or have your intact pride with an obby cape? Choice is yours. Now, when the healers come out, this is where most people stumble, right? Wait for the healers to get close to Jad. If you brought chins, you can throw them now, and it should get some of the healers, but it likely will not get all of them, so be prepared to tag the remaining ones. This is very important right now. Do not just click on the healers from wherever you are. The blowpipe has a very short range, and it can drag you into Jad, where he will melee you for like 90 or something like that. So make sure you run around to get the healers. When the healers are out, also make sure you are only doing one action in between prayer switches. So Jad attacks, check your prayer, run to the side of him. He attacks again, check your prayer again, tag the healer. He attacks again, make sure your prayer is right, tag the next healer, so etc, etc. Now, from here, the rest of the fight is in your hands. The healers might do some damage to you, but don't focus on them, focus on Jad. Heal if you need to, just make sure you're sticking to that one action per prayer switch rule. And if you follow these guidelines successfully, congratulations, my friend. 
You have just earned your first fire cape. Papa Tasty is proud. I recommend celebrating by flaming someone who does not have a fire cape because you are now objectively better than them. Thank you for watching, my boys. Remember to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to go to heaven. Drop a comment if you want more how-to guides. I'm working on a Cox one and I might even work on an Inferno one. So let me know what kind of guides you want to see in the tasty style and I will be happy to oblige. All right, boys. Stay tasty.